Hey cruisers, I'm Sherry with CruiseTipsTV.com. Are you considering a drink package for your next cruise? Typically, these packages are big investments, so you want to make sure you choose wisely and get the most out of your investment. Today, we're sharing 10 of the worst drink package mistakes and how to avoid them. Special thanks to our readers and viewers for sharing their costly blunders so you don't blow it with your next drink package. First up, everyone loves a generous tipper, and the crew are certainly deserving, but over-tipping without knowledge can be a costly drink package blunder. Did you know that most cruise drink packages include prepaid gratuities? It's true. You typically pay around 18% in tips up front when you buy the drink package. So while you can and probably should tip extra here and there on your cruise, remember you've already covered the basic tip amounts. Also, some cruise lines charge tax on each drink when sailing in US waters. So this will add a bit to your bill. It's not much and it's temporary, but it's good to know. This next mistake is irreversible, so listen up. On most cruise lines, not buying your drink package in advance will cost you. With very few exceptions, cruise lines offer discounts for buying the package in advance of your cruise. And that discount can vary from a few dollars per day per person to way more. For example, we've seen Royal Caribbean's cruise planner sales bring a drink package down by nearly 40%. And that's a lot of money when you're considering that the base price can be over $80 per person per day. So do your research and buy the package before your cruise. Another often overlooked element of cruise drink packages is that some cruise lines impose daily drink limits. Beware of this not so obvious gotcha. Carnival Cruise Line is known for having a daily alcoholic drink limit of 15 drinks per day, but sodas and other applicable non-alcoholic beverages remain unlimited and will not be counted toward the 15 alcoholic beverages limit. Every cruise line handles this one differently, and the good news is that some do not impose limits. Read your cruise line's beverage policy carefully before you purchase, or you might regret it. Speaking of limits, some cruise lines impose drink price limits on certain packages. Not understanding these limits is a huge mistake. Let's consider Princess Cruise's drink package, for example. At the time of this recording, if you purchase your drink package by way of upgrading your cruise to Princess Plus, the line's new semi-inclusive package, that drink package covers drinks up to $12 a pop. You can order whatever drink you want, but you'll have to pay the difference for any drink over that $12 limit. Just be aware of these overages or you could end up with a surprise bill at the end of your cruise. For this next mistake, let's focus on the positive for a moment. Most cruise line drink packages include way more than just beer, wine, and cocktails, and that's good. Not knowing this and missing the opportunity to take advantage of included non-alcoholic beverages, water, and more is a big mistake because this is where many people find that their drink package cost becomes worth it in the end. It's super important that you look at each cruise line individually with this one. But here are a few examples of how this works. On Royal Caribbean, if you purchase the deluxe beverage package, it includes fountain soda at any venue, a souvenir cup, mocktails, still and sparkling water in bottles, premium coffees and teas, fresh squeezed juices, and of course, beers, cocktails, and wine. On some ships, your drink package even includes smoothies at the spa cafe with Royal Caribbean. Now, not every cruise line is as generous as Royal Caribbean. For example, NCL doesn't include bottled water, but you get the idea. What this means is that you can and should stock your fridge in your room with bottled water for use in your cabin, on shore excursions, and to rehydrate between all those yummy cocktails especially if your cruise line includes these types of bevies with the package. Grab those bottled waters every time you hit a bar.
That leads us to our next blunder, and that's buying a drink package but not getting your money's worth. Ugh, you've heard that one before. Now we realize that for some, buying the drink package isn't really about value or getting more than you paid for. It can be about the fact that it's just way more relaxing not to pay for every single drink individually as you go, right? Like as you consume things, you're paying and signing it. Oh, it's just a nuisance. Our viewers report they'd rather just take care of the cost before the cruise so they don't have this big bill at the end. However, budget is usually a consideration for most of us. And you're going to want to do your research before you make the decision to buy a drink package. To make this math a little bit easier, we created a drink package calculator. It's down in the description of this video and covers most of the major cruise lines. So how do you make sure that you get the most out of your drink package? So the last thing you wanna do is end up with a hangover on your hard-earned vacation. Our subscribers suggest that you try other tactics, <laughs> not over drinking, like trying drinks you've never tried before. Also, if you're not happy with something you've ordered, try something new. There are lots of ways to maximize your drink package without overdoing it. Next up is a regret that many cruisers stumble upon midway through their cruise, and that is settling for cheaper house liquor when you don't have to. Here's the deal. If your drink package includes top shelf and premium liquors, be sure to ask for them when you order your drink. Ask the bar staff what your package includes and they'll help you through this. Believe me, a margarita made with Patron is much better than that well drink stuff. And hey, I love my martinis made with Bombay Sapphire Gin and believe me, I'm gonna ask for it. Don't make this drink package mistake, guys. It's so easy just to ask the bar staff. Be sure to tell us down in the comments what your favorite premium liquor is and if it works for you on a cruise. Are you able to get them to serve it to you? We wanna know. This next oversight is definitely one you want to avoid. Not knowing the rules and fine print of your drink package will probably lead to disappointment. For example, most cruise lines don't allow you to order drinks on your package as part of a room service order. They also generally won't give you a can of soda, but rather you have to drink the fountain stuff, you know, the bar Coke. If your cruise line allows you to take your own soda in cans on board, you might consider packing a few, especially if you don't care for fountain soda. Just check your cruise line's beverage policy first. Cruise lines also don't allow you to share drinks with other cruisers who haven't purchased the package. This is true of almost every line. If you break these rules and you get caught, you could suffer the consequences. Yet another example is that certain cruise lines don't allow you to use your drink package at their private islands or destinations. You get the idea here. Know exactly what you're buying. There's a lot to this fine print stuff. Yet another example of fine print you should know about is state regulations on drink packages. Case in point, when cruising from certain destinations, the package, the drink package, begins on day two. For example, on Carnival Cruise Line, this is true for ships sailing from Texas and New York due to state restrictions. Again, the bottom line is read the fine print and know what you're paying for or you may find yourself frustrated. Not a drinker? No problem. There may be a drink package for you as well. Most cruise lines offer some sort of a drink package alternative, like a soda package, water package, or our personal favorite, Royal Caribbean's refreshment package. The bummer here is that in most cases, the cruise lines require all adults in a room to purchase the full alcoholic drink package. So say if you want the alcohol drink package but your spouse doesn't, you'll still need to pay for full drink packages for both of you. At the time of recording, Royal Caribbean is the only line we know of that offers exceptions if the non-drinker purchases the refreshment package. But it's always best to give your cruise line a call and ask them so you can avoid this drink package mistake. We touched on this last drink package mistake earlier, but it bears repeating. Booking a beverage package on a port intensive cruise when you may not yield the full value is something that we hear cruisers often regret. Let's just say you're going on a seven night cruise with five port stops. None of those ports offer a private destination where your drink package works and is included, and you plan to go ashore every day. Well, because you might be buying drinks ashore instead, and you're not going to be on the ship all that much using your drink package, the drink package on that port intensive itinerary may not be the best investment value for you. 
Whew, lots to consider, right? There's not a one size fits all answer when considering cruise drink packages, but we hope this video gave you some insight into how to make the right decisions when considering buying a cruise drink package. Now it's your turn. Jump into the comments of this video and tell us your biggest drink package blunders or tips and check out our series on how to make cruise cocktails at home. They're all down in the description. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, we'll see you on the high seas.